Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 15th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Of course, today we'll start with the Microsoft Patch Tuesday. We got a total of 63 vulnerabilities addressed, so somewhat average, I believe. What's not average is that actually two exploited vulnerabilities are being addressed in this update. The first one is yet another patch for the settings.ms file issue. This was discovered a couple of months ago and essentially what it refers to are these shortcuts files for settings that can include code and can execute code. These are little XML files and Microsoft has already addressed this in past patches. Pretty much as soon as this issue became public, we saw malware that used Office documents that embedded these files and the user initially didn't get any kind of warning or so that the code was executed, not like macros or so, but the user first has to enable macros for a specific document. Well, a Microsoft sort of addressed that in prior issues with this latest update, they sort of fix the last hole here in that they now properly validate any paths inside the XML document. And that should sort of put an end to these remote code execution exploits. The second public and already exploited vulnerability is a vulnerability in the Internet Explorer scripting engine. Now, over the years, of course, there have been many, many flaws in the scripting engine. So this is one more, of course, likely to get exploited via drive-by exploits in order to infect and run code within the browser. This one will only give access as the user running the browser. Other than that, uh, as usual, lots of browser and office vulnerabilities. There's also a server remote code execution vulnerability in Microsoft SQL Server. Not much known about this yet, but this could, of course, potentially be interesting. Adobe, of course, also released its updates and the Flash updates have been integrated into this update from Microsoft. As far as priorities go, I would definitely pay attention to the SQL Server vulnerability. Like I said, we don't really know much about it yet, but if that's actually sort of an unauthenticated remote executable flaw, this could become a big deal quickly. The client side vulnerabilities, well, apply them as usual. Yes, the settings.ms has been exploited, but like I said, Microsoft has already put some mitigations in place, so I wouldn't really be too terrified scared of this vulnerability. But Microsoft wasn't the only one releasing patches today. Probably at least as important as the Microsoft patch was a patch released by Oracle for its database product. This vulnerability that is being addressed in this patch does allow arbitrary code execution. However, an attacker has to have an authenticated connection to the database first. The CVE number for this vulnerability is 2018-3110 and it does have a CVSS base score of 9.9. Oracle states that due to the nature of this vulnerability, Oracle strongly recommends that customers take action without delay. Now, databases, of course, are usually not directly exposed and you don't allow random users to connect to them, but this would be a great sort of vulnerability once an attacker has, for example, access to a web application to then escalate that and leverage the exploit to gain full access to the database that the web application connects to. And Intel disclosed three more vulnerabilities related to speculative execution. Now, they're not just calling them yet again Spectre, but instead they gave them a new name, L1 Terminal Fault Errors. 
When software does try to access memory that hasn't actually been mapped to a hardware location, this will fail with a terminal fault, but thanks to speculative execution, some memory may already be loaded in the L1 cache, and uh, that of course then may lead to some of the now well-known side channel attacks to read out this memory. There's one interesting twist that you should be aware of, like with prior vulnerabilities, virtualized systems of course are at high risk here where a malicious virtual machine could read memory either from the host or from other virtual machines. In order to patch this, you not only have to patch the host, you also have to patch the guest operating system. So you have to make sure that all your guests are running patched operating systems, otherwise they can attack other guests. So the patch doesn't protect the guest, the patch will protect the other guests on the system. And of course, here you're running the risk that a malicious user that is able to swap kernels in one of the guest operating systems would be able to load an unpatched kernel. More details about this vulnerability will be released later this week at the Usenix conference. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.